For decades, video game guidebooks were a staple of the video game industry, serving as this go-to source for gamers who wanted to get the most out of their favorite games. From tips and tricks on how to beat hard parts of the game, to helping you navigate through a confusing part of the journey, or just in general, filling you with more lore and knowledge if you were really into the game that you were playing. Today, however, the popularity of guidebooks has waned, and many, much like myself, just one day realized you don't see them anymore. What led to this decline? I want to take a look and explore that today. In the early days of gaming, guidebooks were much more a necessity. Games were often difficult and vague, filled with complex puzzles and hidden secrets that if you weren't able to stumble upon them yourself, or hear it from a rumor being passed around from your friends, you may have gone for years or decades never truly knowing about it. Guidebooks provided a way for players to navigate these challenges and uncover all the game had to offer. Companies like Nintendo having segments or full-on player's guides through their Nintendo Power brand and magazine. Or publishers like Prima Games, Brady Games, and Piggyback Interactive being the leading force out there for strategy guides for the biggest games of every year. As the gaming industry would continue to grow, so did the popularity of guidebooks. The mass production of high-quality guides were made for almost every game you can think of, from AAA game series like the Halo franchise to massive scripture-like MMOs, to games you question if they really even needed a guidebook for in the first place. But the fact is that they were everywhere, and were made for every Everything. These guides would be comprehensive, covering everything from the game's mechanics, hidden items, easter eggs, and even strategies, really putting the strategy in strategy guides. But as we entered into the aughts and the internet became more ubiquitous, the popularity of guidebooks started to lessen. The rise of online guides and walkthroughs became this easy to access and free go-to source for gamers looking for help with their favorite games. Websites like GameFAQs and IGN offered detailed walkthroughs and guides that you could just turn your computer on and go read. You no longer needed to necessarily shill out the extra $15 to $20 for a book to sift through while playing. If you were stuck in a game, there was an online guide for that. If you wanted to find hidden items or easter eggs, there was a forum detailing how to find them. Guidebooks were once a lucrative business for these publishers, with them being an easy add-on selling point in game stores as the biggest games would come out. But once we would hit the mid-2010s, the shift to online resources really started becoming the official commonplace, and this would be heavily reflected in the sales numbers, which would begin to decline. But throughout the 2010s, for these guides, the sales numbers would continue to go down, trying to see if there were other avenues to compete, even with Prima trying to sell their guides on places like the Steam Marketplace. But again, on the internet, these guides would just be everywhere. While we know how today a walkthrough or guide online is put together through editors, reviewers, and gamers alike, the video game guidebooks themselves are a bit different in their original process. Go ahead, take it. Shh. And a playable bonus disc. Free. Bring her up. GameStop. Luckily today, guides for games are made right before or as games are coming out, saving a lot of people from any spoilers or certain information leaking. But when it comes to mass producing a full-on book that needs to release the same day the video game does, the guides would have to be created in a very different way. Most times, these guides would be written alongside wherever the game was at in development, a pre-release or earlier and older build of what the final game may be. This is tricky to navigate, as this could lead to multiple incorrect moments within the guides themselves that don't accurately reflect what's in the final version of the game. From small stuff like item locations or certain map changes or wrong quest instructions, the list of little mistakes is something that plagues a lot of strategy guides. Most times it wouldn't be too big of a deal and the gamer can just figure it out. But if things needed some genuine corrections to reflect the full game's release, or then access to the internet would come in handy for downloadable, edited, and fixed pages. A majority of the big release guides guidebooks would be labeled as official, meaning licensed out or made by the game distributors themselves to represent their game. Unofficial guides could be made too, and honestly for the most part, anything online in the ways that we've mentioned before are as unofficial as they come, but at least they come from the direct final product, representing the game as it actually is in that moment. One thing we saw that was both trying to match the rise of collector's editions of video games, as well as find another bit of extra revenue, were collector's editions of 
of guidebooks that would come with a few extra goodies. Maybe some posters or extra maps, lithographs, but most times would all be a nicer presentation with a hard cover featuring different artwork. And I'm not gonna lie, I definitely went for some of the collector's editions of guidebooks as some of them were genuinely cool and caught my interest. And some I got for the price of the regular guidebook thanks to my employee discount at GameStop. But another major nail in the coffin that involves the internet was the rise of content creators, both in the form of posting edited videos and in the form of live streaming, offering gamers to, with or without commentary, play video games, make specific guides to find all the extras in a video game, and, well, essentially anything you can think of. More and more content would be made around it, creating new job fields and hobbies for thousands and thousands, as now it wouldn't just be done in forums or by organizations like an IGN. And now, here you are watching a video on the internet about video game guidebooks. We surely live in weird times. But while the guidebook industry has shrunk and some companies who made them became one through their parent company's purchasing them, I wouldn't say it's 100% dead. There are some factors to account for, with some not having the best internet access, or some not being as technology savvy, or a regular guidebook format may be more helpful. Sure, a lot of games today may forego the physical strategy guide, but some major game releases still do have some produced, usually to a more limited quantity, but it's not impossible to find some of them today in the 2020s. The video game collector, or just collector market in general, also has some decent pull here. I remember there were plenty of times I spent the extra money to get a guidebook just because I was really invested into a new game or went back for the guidebook just to have it look nice on a shelf and be something to thumb through here and there. At some places like GameStop, guidebooks that didn't sell well became pennied out after a while, meaning that they get a system price of a penny in value. And what some managers or general managers would have you do is take some if you would want them or they would most times end up throwing them out. But for the store I worked at, what we would do is if someone was buying a game that we had a pennied out guide for, we would just toss it in for free rather than have that guide go to waste. But as this would happen more frequently, and this being back towards the early 2010s, the writing was on the walls for what the future for guidebooks was quickly becoming. But what was the video game guidebook industry to do? There was no way to combat the rise of the internet with websites writing up their own guides and content creators making videos for a more visual experience. The access to information like this became so instant and accessible on PCs, mobile devices, tablets, you name it. The output was faster. There was no large cost of producing or publishing a book in mass quantity. The video game guidebook just couldn't compete with the changing times. So for now and for the future, what does it hold? While popularity has declined, there is always a market, albeit smaller, for physical print media. For those who love the tangibility of it or the collecting joy that comes with seeing it on your shelf, that's something I'm very passionate about, so I'm right there with you. So while things do sound grim for this medium of video game information, there are still guidebooks being made. Just not every game is getting them in a physical form. In the end, the rise and fall of the video game guidebook is a reflection of the changing video game industry landscape thanks to the rise of the free internet. But for those who grew up with them, they will always be be remembered as this beloved part of gaming history for many. For me, looking through these guides that I still have and the presentation value of it all put together, I do feel this sense of nostalgia, remembering the uncountable amount of hours of use that some of these guidebooks gave me. And then some make me question, why do I own this?